Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 4.2. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. I thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Thanks for my brothers and sisters. We ask, Lord God, that we would desire to earnestly pray to get before you, Lord God, and to release what you're placing in us out of the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I just declare over you wholeness, peace, life, health, prosperity, earnestness, earnestly, earnestness, <laughs> in every area of your lives, in Jesus' name, glory, glory. And this, that takes me to our word this morning. Our word this morning is earnestly, glory. It means serious in intention, purpose, or effort, sincerely zealous, glory. And we need to be earnest in our prayers. We need to earnestly be zealous in our prayers. Um, right now, the Lord's teaching me that sometimes the things that come our way, we're not supposed to own them. They're, they're, uh, they're meant to be prayed through. You might be, uh, the Lord might be laying something on your heart and you think it's you. But it's really for somebody else. And you begin to pray and seek the Lord and ask Him what's going on. He's going to reveal it to you. And I'll let the Holy Spirit take it from there. Uh, this morning it's about getting before the Lord and praying. Getting before the Lord and praying. Whether we're playing, yeah, playing, praying in our prayer closet. Praying publicly. Praying over someone. Glory. <laughs> To the ultimate someone, glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't really know where I'm going in this. I just know that I, I have it on my heart to talk about praying this morning. And the first thing I want to talk about is what, what goes on in our lives. In Philippians 4, 6 and 7 it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And that word prayer there means... Uh, worship. I mean, we could just worship <laughs> in our prayers, letting God know everything. I mean, that word there means everything. I mean, <laughs> everything. I was just looking at it this morning. Yeah, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When you thanking God, thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for supplying my needs. I'm being humble here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're truly being humble when you're being thankful. You're truly being humble. Glory. Let your request be made known to God. Don't hold anything back. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Glory. It's in Christ Jesus. Enveloped in Christ Jesus. Surrounded by Christ Jesus. Your prayers are heard. Our prayers are powerful. What we speak is powerful. And the Lord hears us. But we have to let Him know. We have to get before Him with thanksgiving. Worship of, <laughs> Worshipfully. <laughs> coming before Him. <laughs> Releasing those prayers. Um, the past couple of days, I've been really struggling. And uh, the Lord showed me a couple days ago, actually past since Monday evening, it just all of a sudden came on me. And uh, yesterday was pretty good, but, you know, well, I mean, uh, the day before yesterday was pretty good, but yesterday sometime early in the day it started rising up again. And uh, I woke up with it again this morning. And as I'm walking the trail, I... You know, I'm asking the Lord, you know, what's going on here? Why am I feeling like this? You know, I don't have to t take these things on myself. And the uh, Lord revealed to me, which he revealed to me on Tuesday, but I kind of just forgot about it. I don't know why, but it just kind of sunk off the side that I was actually travailing for somebody else. And I need to earnestly pray for them that they would overcome those things. And I'm what I'm just feeling is that part of what they're going through, this is a prophetic thing. We're, we're connected by the Spirit of God. And for those of you who don't believe this, 
And as a child of God, we're, we're in a family and we're all connected via the Spirit of God. And there's things that people go through that aren't aren't really part of the family at the time. They're part of the family, but they're not. They're, they're out doing their own thing. And this brother that uh, is out doing his own thing, there's a lot of things in his life, and the enemy knows what the Lord's planning on doing. He wants to stop it. And this brother's being tormented. And I can just feel it through the Spirit. Via the Spirit, I'm feeling these things. And it feels like it's my own stuff. But what it really is, is, is a call to prayer. It's a call to intercede on behalf of this person. Sometimes when we're feeling things and we don't understand why we're, why we're going through these things, we need to seek God. We need to ask the Lord, hey, Holy Spirit, what's going on? You know, I was tempted to just ask him, you know, what did I do wrong? <laughs> You know, you get that temptation to ask that question. But I know that in asking that question, I'm saying, I'm really saying, I can do this on my own. You know, why are you, why are you putting this on me? <laughs> and and that's, not the, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to get us to begin to intercede. Begin to stand in the gap. Begin to pray. Begin to thank God that he's going to deliver this person from where they're at. Lord, and as soon as I started praying for this person, this thing lifted again. So I don't know how many times I'm going to forget about this and have this come on until it, until it breaks. I mean, this person is under some heavy-duty attack the Lord's revealed to me. And, and he's letting me feel just a little bit. And I don't want any more, you know. <laughs> I don't want any more. I'll, I'll pray for him. I, you know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed so hard that he was dry. I mean, some people say that uh, his capillaries were bursting. I don't know about that. But uh, drips of sweat, <laughs> the size of drops of blood, you know. And, and so sometimes we have to intercede earnestly, earnestly, that, that, that things will be released so you start feeling like you have something coming on. You begin to seek the Lord and be prepared to hear. Glory. Okay, I'm just releasing that to you. And in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it says, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Glory. Glory. You have confidence. I was looking at, uh, at Jeremiah 29, 11 last night. I read, to, read over my wife last night. And I uh, was reading Psalms 37 and got finished. And I mean, I was fighting it what I was going through and uh, I read uh, Jeremiah 29 11 it's on the front of my Bible cover and the Lord asked me do you believe this and I said I do and believe I will never leave you I will always be with you and I mean you know okay I believe that Lord but what I've been feeling and everything, going through these things, until the Lord reminded me again when I started seeking Him, why is this happening? Uh, and I began to pray for that person that lifted off and those promises become real again. So we need to go in confidence when we're praying that God is going to give us the answer. I knew He was going to give me the answer. I had no doubt in my mind. And that when I begin to pray for this person, I know that the Lord is going to intervene on that person's behalf as we intercede. Lord, Lord, praise your name. And in Matthew 6, 5 through 15, <laughs> I know I got a lot of scripture this morning, but we need to hear about religious people and people outside the church. 
okay? And this is what this is about. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Get along with the Lord. Get along with him. You know, I think uh, on some levels what Jesus was talking about with the uh, religious people, the hypocrites and the, and the Gentiles, is it really one and the same <laughs> on, on some levels? At, uh, you know, uh, I've, heard, I've heard flower flowery flowery <laughs> I need to practice that word flowery prayers I've heard those prayers and I'm sure you've heard them too long-winded just oriented prayers that what could have been said in a, in, in a couple of words I have trouble praying my my you know me praying out in public is is <laughs> it, it's uh it's not pretty sometimes, but it comes from the heart. And that's what God wants is from our hearts. And when you're going through something, seek the Lord. It might be for somebody else. And you might be just getting a little taste of what they're going through. And it might seem like a big thing on your shoulders. A big struggle. I woke up last night. Um... And I had such a fear on me that I just wanted to get up and run. It was like, when I was out in the world and I was out committing criminal activities, if that fear came on me that I was about to get caught or whatever, I would run like a madman. And that's the way I felt last night. I felt like screaming and running. And I raised my hand up to the Lord, and I said, you haven't given me a spirit of fear. Help me. <laughs> and the Lord began to speak to me. He began to speak to me, and, and, and it started to subside. And, and I feel like I've been under some extreme attack by the enemy, but it's really for somebody else. It's really for what somebody else is going through their own error. This person is in bondage to drugs and alcohol. And he has religious issues about who God is. And 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 until we walk in somebody's shoes, we're not going to know how it is. I came out of that. I know how it is. And I think that's why the Lord's chosen me. Yesterday at work, the Lord told me, I'm giving you compassion. I'm pouring into you compassion. And <laughs> what does that look like, Lord? What does that look like? You know, <laughs> Jesus had compassion. Compassion is a component of love. And and so as I as I get ready to leave this this blog this morning, I just want you to to seek God in in the direction that you should be going. If you're going through something, I think this is for the people that go through things like I go through things. Yet we remain strong in the Lord and more dedicated. 
if we just need to begin to seek the Lord openly and honestly in our prayer closets, wherever we're alone with Him at, why is this happening, Lord? Am I believing a lie? And the Holy Spirit will reveal to you if you're willing to listen and believe, if it is somebody else that you need to be interceding for, and if you feel it's somebody else you need to be interceding for, intercede for them. And keep it between you and your Father in Heaven, and that's where your reward will be. Don't run to the person and say, Hey, God's laid you on my heart, blah, 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 blah. Be encouraging to that person. Be a light to that person. But get in your prayer closet and get alone before the Father and release that to Him for that person so God can intercede on behalf of that person. Maybe you're the only person that can break that bondage. Think about Daniel when he began to pray for the children of Israel. And the angel of the Lord showed up and said, Daniel, from the moment you set your heart to pray, God has heard your prayers. Beloved of God, God has heard your prayers. But I was stopped by the enemy. This is my paraphrase. Go read it in Daniel. But I was stopped by the enemy. And finally, Michael the Archangel had to come and relieve me to fight against the Prince of Persia. In other words, the moment you begin to earnestly pray, you begin to break a bondage. But there's things going on in the spirit realm that don't want, the enemy doesn't want freedom for this person wants this person to believe that they're less than that they can't get away from the drugs or the alcohol that they can't possibly be set free but through prayer the Lord's releasing that angel to come and fight on on, on behalf of that person Keep the enemy at bay. So that person will have an opportunity to walk into freedom. So I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for your children. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the life that you've placed in us. For how much you love us, Lord God. That you will allow us to experience what someone else is going through. That you're calling us to prayer. That there's a call to prayer. A call to get alone with you in our prayer closet. That you're calling us to be earnest in our prayers, Lord God. Sincere in our prayers. And I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, you need to get alone with the Lord. Get alone with Him in that prayer closet. Get alone with Him on the trail. Just get alone with Him. Begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. Become worship. Be obedient to the call. And if it, like me, slips out of your mind and things start picking up again and you have to ask the Lord again because you've forgotten, it's okay. God still loves my heart. He still loves your heart. Right where we're at. But, he, but He's calling us to be sincere. And you become worship. And you become worship is, is the highest calling that we can have. They worship God must worship Him in spirit and truth. And I want you to have an awesome day. Hey, I'll see you. Bye.